Maxon just dropped yet again another update and this one had a really cool feature that really pumped my tires inside of Cinema 4D 2023.2 and that's the ability to use vertex maps to control balloon inflation simulations inside of Cinema 4D. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the ins and outs of this new feature and how you can create really cool balloon inflation animations with just a few clicks of a button. Let's dive in. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is make sure that your object is prepped for balloonification. That's right, that's a word. So if you're using, say, primitive objects, this is very easy because all you need to do, let me just grab, say, a, a capsule here. All you need to do is if we look at the edges here, so N and then B to show the edges here, all you need to do is use these segment options to just nicely subdivide and evenly subdivide this object. The one thing you don't wanna do when you're applying dynamics to an object is have way too many segments. You don't want your object to be too dense. You want to have things, you know, modestly dense like me. So your simulation doesn't run too slow or cause too many errors because the denser the mesh, the more errors and the slower everything's gonna run. So with that being said, if you wanna combine, say, a bunch of primitives together to create unique balloony objects, or if you're, say, working with an extruded logo or extruded text, there's an easy way to be able to kind of balloonify, make a nice rounded, evenly subdivided mesh that'll be perfect for inflation purposes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little cocktail of the volume builder, the volume mesher, and the remesher, okay? So let's place the school motion logo extrude in the volume builder, place the volume builder in the volume mesher, and then we'll wait to place the volume mesher into the remesher until the very end. But you can see that this is looking amazing so far. No, it's not. But the voxel size is way too big, so let's bring that down. Voxels are basically 3D pixels, so if we lower that value, we have much more resolution here with our 3D voxels. And this is looking pretty good. A little sharp around the edges, so what we can do is add an SDF smooth that's gonna smooth everything out. And then another thing I like to do, you can even adjust this uh, strength here. Another thing I like to do on top of this is add in, if I click and hold, a dilate in a road. And what this does is just thickens everything really nicely. And this is a little too thick, probably. So what we can do is adjust the offset here. And this is how much this is kind of offsetting, or we can even erode this a little bit as well by going into the negative centimeters. But if I just increase this just a little bit, and I wanna to try to make sure these little holes in the logo are still visible, and we can also adjust the overall strength here. And this is looking pretty nice, okay? Maybe we can go into the school motion logo, go to the object tab, and maybe bring down this offset to like 3.2. And that's looking pretty nice and rounded. Now you can see that the Geometry is a little janky, and that's what the remesh is for. It's going to nicely subdivide and create a nice topology for us to use with the simulations. You can see how nice that looks. So if we look at the remesher, you can do a whole bunch of stuff with this, but the main thing you can do is decrease or increase the mesh density. So if I put in 50%, we're gonna have 50% less dense of a mesh, okay? So we can also go the other way and go like 150% and increase the mesh density here. So I'm gonna kind of split the difference here, maybe go 130, just to add a little bit more density. We can see how much we can push this because we're gonna actually keep all of this live and apply the dynamics tag directly to this remesh, which is really cool. Another thing we can do is since this is an extruded object and it's gonna be symmetrical along the Z, we can also remesh it along the Z as well, okay? So that what we can do, it's time to apply some uh, balloon dynamics. So I'm gonna right click on the remesh, I'm gonna go to simulation tags, and there's this balloon preset. And basically what the balloon preset does is it automatically turns on this balloon. And so if I hit play, you're gonna see that the object just falls. And so first thing I'm gonna do is just to show you all the things you can do with balloon, I'm gonna just turn off the gravity. So I'm gonna hit command and control D to go to my project settings, go to the simulation settings, go to the scene settings here, and then just zero out the gravity. So enter zero and hit enter, and that will turn off gravity. So now if I hit play, and let's actually give ourselves like 400 frames to let this go, and you can see nothing's actually happening. If I go back to my 
cloth tag here, go to the balloon. This overpressure is controlling how much pressure is inflating our object. And the default value of one really isn't doing anything. So let's go ahead and let's rewind and let's put in a value of say like 3.5 and let's see what happens. So if I hit play now, you can see everything just kind of inflates. We have this pressure inflating our geometry and this is looking pretty good. Now this expansion time is how quickly this object from frame zero will add the overpressure, add the pressure to inflate the object. So whatever you enter here, if it's 30 frames, it's gonna take 30 frames to get to this maximum overpressure value of 3.5. If I increase this to say 120, it's gonna take 120 frames for this to slowly inflate to this max value. Now why this is here is if this value is too low, like 10 frames, you can start to see all of this kind of crazy stuff happening. The polygons are sticking and all that kind of stuff. So this is kind of why it's there. Another thing you can do if you want to really have a lot of control over the inflation over time, you can just keyframe this overpressure value. So very, very handy, okay? So the big thing about Cinema 4D 2023.2 is the ability to control this ballooning with this vertex map area here. So let's go ahead and let's create a vertex map. So I'm gonna hit Shift C and we have our brand new commander that was also introduced in Cinema 4D 2023.2. And so we're just gonna search for vertex map. And with that remesh selected, I'm just gonna double click and that's gonna apply a vertex map to our remesher. So in newer versions of Cinema 4D, you don't have to make these objects editable. Like in previous versions, you can just apply vertex maps to any generator object now and keep everything procedural and live, okay? So with this vertex map, you can actually use fields to control it. And so if I go to the fields tab here, let's create a linear field and let's select this linear field, hit T for scale and just scale this down. And you can see how this linear field is controlling the strength of the vertex map. So red means 0% strength or influence of the vertex map and yellow means 100% influence of this vertex map. So basically what we can do with this vertex map is control the influence of this overpressure, of this ballooning to you know zero to 100%. So what we can do to control the overpressure is just dragging and dropping the vertex map into the map field here. And if I hit play, you'll see that everything yellow or orangish will start to inflate and everything's just kind of going all crazy. When that happens, hit escape and then just go back to frame zero. And I found that if things start exploding too much, just bring down the uh, overpressure there and hit play. And there we start to go and things are looking pretty nice. And you're seeing all this undulation too. Let's go and calm that down a little bit. So if I hit command or control D to go back to our simulation settings, I can go to the simulation scene settings here and adjust some of these values. So some of the most important ones are the smoothing iterations. This is basically gonna smooth out any popping and jeeriness that happens in your simulation. So let's maybe bring this to three. Damping is also gonna calm down the particles quicker that are driving this simulation. So if we bring this up to 10, that should hopefully calm things down. Another thing is this velocity clamp. If you just change this to absolute, I'm just gonna bring this down to like 200 and this is going to prevent any particles from going way too fast, okay? And then the collisions are very important as well. Let's go like three and three, and this is gonna just help prevent any collisions. In this end frame pass, I just kind of turn on, I don't exactly know what it does, but anyways, let's uh, turn this back on again. And you can see that things are a little bit more ruly. And if we kind of drag this linear field through, this really nice controlled inflation animation, and another thing you don't want to do is move your vertex maps too quickly over your object or you'll get things exploding like that. So you want to, if you're keyframing this linear field, you want to go nice and slow. Easy does it. And you can get this like kind of deflation thing as well. Okay. So I'm going to go hit escape to stop the simulation and to go back to frame zero. And the one thing I'm gonna show you is how you can start to art direct this a little bit, get more like wrinkles and all that kind of good stuff. And how we can do that is two ways. Number one is upping the bendiness value here. So if I bring in like 30 for bendiness, 
can get a little bit more stretchiness here. And then this target length is very important too. And what this allows the mesh to do is grow beyond its initial size. So I can have this grow to like 115% of its initial size. And we're going to get a little bit more of that slack. And you can see when I press play, all these really nice wrinkles from that target length. And you can see what that looks like. Another thing I like to do is go to this mix animation and turn on this with force. Now this is basically your follow position, follow rotation of the old dynamic system. And what it allows your simulation to do is to try to stay within its original position. So you can see if I bring this down to like 0.2, this is going to allow the object to move a little more. If I turn this off altogether, you can see how this is going to freely kind of move around. And if I go and up the with force to two, you can see how that's trying to get back to its original position and it's using dynamics. It's using forces to do that with this option. Okay. So this is looking pretty cool within itself. Got these really nice wrinkles. And you can see if I go all the way over to the right, the vertex map is just controlling the inflation at this point. One thing that's really nice is this vertex map can control the force option here as well as the target length here as well. So let's just drag and drop the vertex map into this target length and you'll see that that target length is only going to be applied to whatever is yellow on our object. So if I bring this over again, you can start to see the not only the the ballooning, but the target length is going to be controlled there as well. And so we can go here and maybe go to 130 and see what this looks like. Hit play. And so we can back through here and actually deflate this by just bringing that linear field backwards. Okay. So this is really super cool. But one thing that's even cooler is automating the growth of your vertex map over time. So how we can do this is I'm going to change this linear field from a linear field to a spherical field. And if I select my vertex map so we can see what's going on here and I hit T for scale, shrink this down and let's actually just have this touching the corner here. What we can do is expand the influence and strength of this vertex map across the surface using what's called a freeze layer. So in your vertex map, in the fields area, we're going to go and we're going to grab a freeze layer. And we're just going to bring this below the spherical field and change the spherical field blending mode to max. This is basically like your add blending mode. You can think of these as like matte layers in like Photoshop or uh, After Effects. And so this spherical field is basically going to add on to the influence of this freeze layer. Now what the freeze layer can do is allow you to take any of the fields up above it and grow it over time. So in the freeze layer, I'm going to change the mode from none to grow. And then we have these grow settings where this is going to control the initial radius of the growth. And this is going to control the strength over time. So if I bring this to say 5%, Let's watch and hit play. Let's watch this vertex map and you can see how this is going to grow over time and expand out here. Now, if I bring the strength up to say 25, you're going to see this grow faster across our vertex map here. And you can see how cool and of effect this is. Now, another thing we can do is kind of break this up and make this not look so linear. So what we can do is let me just hit play again. And let's get to a point where we're seeing a lot of this effect. And I'm just going to hit escape to pause this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to overlay a random field on top of it. So if I choose, let's go overlay, you're going to see if I adjust the scale here, this is going to kind of break up the organic by kind of undulating and adjusting all this. And you can also add like a animation strength in here. So over time, our noise will animate. So let's check out what this looks like now. And you can start to see, let me click off that vertex map. You start to see that nice organic growth now too. It's kind of gross at times, but this is looking, you know, pretty nice. Now, the one thing you want to watch out for is this growing too quickly over time. It's the same thing as having our balloon expansion too quick over time. So in this freeze layer, if we go to 100% of that effect strength, you're going to see how this just explodes really actually that doesn't look too bad that didn't explode too too much so you can kind of control how fast you want this bring up the radius a little bit too 
And this is just really fun. This is no keyframes whatsoever. And we're getting this really cool balloony inflation there. So a lot of things unlocked and a lot of possibilities unlocked with just the simple addition of the vertex map ability to control this overpressure over time using a vertex map. Now, I also created some balloon materials. So if you want to download the project file, you can see what that looks like. Another cool thing, a little bonus that I'll show you here. Let me just turn on these lights and everything. One really cool thing is go into the asset browser and check out the new content because there's constantly updates here. There's a lot of really cool updated Redshift materials that come with the new version of Cinema 4D. There's all these new presets. There's all these new node operators, which is really cool. They're, they're created by uh, Rocket Lasso, Chris Schmidt over there at Rocket Lasso. So a lot of cool stuff being added, including the studio backdrop object. So I'm just going to drag and drop this into my scene. Let's just drag this down. I'm just going to close out of the asset browser here and let's rewind because I'm going to have this just kind of place right below this object here and let's make this a dynamic collider. So I'm just going to right click on that backdrop object, go to simulation tags and go to collider. And now let's see what happens and let's hit N and then A to get out of our shading with lines. Let's actually get out of our work plane here too. And everything's just kind of blown out. So let's go to quick shading. There we go. And now let's see this grow over time. And now this is going to collide into the ground here, which is really cool. And let's just start up our IPR here and let's kind of throw on this yellowish material for this backdrop. Again, download the project file and you can see exactly how I built these balloon textures and stuff. But there you go. A nice little balloony animation. And one last thing we can do is we can subdivide this at render time by right clicking on the remesher going to render tags and adding a redshift object, going to the geometry tag, and we can use this to basically tessellate or subdivide this at render time. So it's like a subdivision surface that just happens whenever you render. It's not actually happening in your viewport and slowing your viewport down, but this is a pretty cool effect that I really dig and I can't wait to see what everyone does with these really cool balloon inflation animations. And if you make anything, be sure to tag us because I'd love to see what you come up with. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you want to learn more about Cinema 4D, After Effects, and all the other motion designy things, be sure to head over to our courses page at schoolofmotion.com. And there you can find all of our current offerings. And if you hurry, you can enter in this spring's registration period. So I hope to see you in a class and I hope to see you again whenever we come out with a new tutorial. Until then, keep on making stuff.